In this video, we will investigate the derivative as a function and look at a couple of examples of how to calculate a derivative given the definition of derivative. As you recall, for a function f defined at the point x equals a and at nearby points, the derivative of f with respect to x at x equals a is given by f prime of a, which equals the limit of f evaluated at a plus h minus f evaluated at a divided by h as h goes to zero. Now if we replace a plus h with t, we can express this limit definition as the limit as t approaches a of f evaluated at t minus f evaluated at a all divided by t minus a. Now this is provided that the limit exists. If the limit does not exist, then we say that f is not differentiable at x equals a. We can move from looking at the derivative of a function f with respect to x at a specific point a f of a to considering the derivative as a function. Well, what does this mean? So for each x in the domain of f, we can think about the slope of the tangent line to the function at that x value if the limit exists. And again, we're talking about this limit, the limit of f of x plus h minus f of x divided by h as h goes to zero. But we can also think about that x moving throughout the domain. And treating f prime as a function means that we can consider pairing an input value x with its slope, or f prime of a. We can look at the graph of y equals f of x, where f of x equals x cubed minus 8x plus 4. I want you to consider the slope of the red tangent line as x moves through the domain of the function f. Now the slope of that red tangent line is f prime of x. So here we have the function f of x equals x cubed minus 8x plus 4. Here I've got a point, I've, I've graphed the tangent line, I, as I move this point along, I see that the slope of the tangent line is positive, but it's decreasing, and it reaches a point where the tangent line is horizontal, so that the slope of the tangent line is zero. And now the function is decreasing, so the slopes are negative, until we get to about right here, approximately 1.75 or so. Again, we have a horizontal tangent line, so the slope is zero, and then after this, x, uh, after x equals 1.75 or so, we see that the slopes are now positive again and getting very large. We can have different notation for the derivative. We've already seen these two different limit definitions. We can also say it's the limit of delta f, where delta represents change in f. So delta f divided by delta x as delta x goes to zero, which really highlights this idea of slope because I could think of this as the limit as delta x goes to zero of delta y over delta x, which where we think of delta y over delta x or change in y over change in x to be a slope, which helps to emphasize the next form of notation, which is dy dx, or a capital D followed by f with a subscript of x between them to be the derivative of f with respect to x. So all of these are notations that you'll see throughout this course. Let's take a look at an example. For what values of x is the tangent line to the graph of y equals f of x perpendicular to the line y equals 1 sixth x plus 3 when the function f of x equals x cubed minus 8x plus 4? Now, if I want to answer this question, I have to think about, well, when do we have perpendicular lines? Well, lines are perpendicular when the product of their slopes is negative 1. Well, in the equation y equals 1 sixth x plus 3, I know that the slope is 1 sixth. So the slope of the tangent line that I'm looking for has to be, has to have a slope of negative 6. So I want to know for what values of x is f prime of x equal to negative 6. So that's my, my overall goal. Now to reach that goal, I have to first evaluate the derivative of f with respect to x. And so for that, I'm going to use this limit definition of the derivative, the limit of f of t minus f of x divided by t minus x as t approaches x. So I'm going to evaluate my, func evaluate my function f at t, and I'm going to subtract off the value of the function at x to get the numerator t cubed minus 8t plus 4 minus x cubed minus 8x plus 4, all divided by t minus x as t gets close to x. 
Next, I'm going to clear it of parentheses, and I'm going to see that I can, um, that I've got a positive 4 and a negative 4, which then I've got t cubed minus x cubed minus 8t plus 8x divided by t minus x as t gets close to x, and I'm going to group the like terms and factor out a negative 8 from the t minus, from the 8t and 8x. Next, I'm going to break up the numerator and write t cubed minus x cubed divided by t minus x minus 8, 8 times t minus x divided by t minus x. My goal is actually to factor out t minus x from both the numerator and denominator, so I'm not dividing by 0. Well, I've got a difference of cubes in that first uh, fraction, which factors as t minus x and t squared plus t times x plus x squared. So now I've got a factor of t minus x in the numerator and denominator of both terms. So now I get the limit as t approaches x of t squared plus t times x plus x squared minus 8. I evaluate the limit and I get 3x squared minus 8. So this tells me that for my function x squared minus 8x plus 4, the derivative f prime of x equals 3x squared minus 8, which tells me that for any x in the domain of my function, the slope of the tangent line to the graph of f is obtained from this formula. So if I have the point 3, f of 3, which is the point 3, 7 on the graph, the slope of the tangent line to the graph at that point is 3 times 3 squared minus 8, which is 19. So let's go back to the original question. For what values of x is the tangent line to the graph of y equals f of x perpendicular to the line of y equals 1 sixth x plus 3 when my function is x cubed minus 8x plus 4? So I want to know when is the derivative equal to negative 6? Well, I know the derivative is 3x squared minus 8. And solving for that, I get x equals a positive or negative square root of 2 thirds. Let's consider another example. Let's look at the function m evaluated at r, which is 2 divided by r plus 3 as long as r is not equal to negative 3, and let's find its derivative, m prime evaluated at r. First, I'm going to use the limit definition of m at r plus h minus m at r divided by h as h goes to 0. So when I evaluate my function m at r plus h and r, and I find the difference in the numerator, I need to first find a common denominator, which in this case is r plus h plus 3 times r plus 3 which simplifies to 2 times r plus 3 minus 2 times r plus h plus 3, all divided by r plus h plus 3 times r plus 3, all over h as h goes to 0. Now, I've got a fraction within a fraction, and simplifying, I get the limit as h goes to 0 of 2 times r plus 3 minus 2 times r plus h plus 3, all over h times r plus h plus 3 times r plus 3. I'm going to use the distributive property, and now I can simplify that numerator because I have a positive 2r and a negative 2r, a positive 6 and a negative 6, and I'm left with the limit as h goes to 0 of negative 2h divided by h times r plus h plus 3 times r plus 3. I've got a common factor of h in the numerator and denominator. And I'm left with the limit as h goes to 0 of negative 2 divided by r plus h plus 3 times r plus 3. And so now I'm able to evaluate the limit as h goes to 0. And I get negative 2 divided by r plus 3 quantity squared. Now if I look, took, take a look at the graph of m evaluated at r, which is 2 divided by r plus 3, I've just evaluated the derivative, which is negative 2 divided by r plus 3 squared, and I notice that that derivative is always negative as long as r is not equal to negative 3, which makes sense because if I recall, that derivative tells me the slopes of the tangent lines, and I see that the slopes are always negative. We're going to wrap up 
this session by talking about local linearity as it relates to whether a function is differentiable. Local linearity is the concept that when you enlarge the graph of a function to really focus on a narrow window about a specific point, in this case we'll look at a f of a, the graph looks like a line. And the line that you see is the line having the slope f prime of a, and it passes through that point a f of a. So let's consider the question, when is a function f not differentiable at a point x equals a? Well, a function is not differentiable at a point x equals a if the function is not locally linear at that point. Or if there's a tangent line, but that tangent line appears to be vertical at that point. So in other words, f prime of a does not exist because that limit, f of a plus h minus f of a as all over h as h goes to zero does not exist. So here's a case where the function is not differentiable at x equals negative one. Because if I were to zoom in and look at a very narrow window around x equals negative one, there is no way that that graph would ever look like a line. And recall, we have to look, we have to see what happens to the slope of the function as we're coming both from the left and right of negative one. So in this case, this function is not differentiable at x equals negative one because there's a jump discontinuity at x equals negative one. Let's consider another example. Here's a function. It's periodic. But if we, for instance, focus at some of these sharper points, suppose I take one of those, suppose I look at what happens when x is equal to zero, and I zoom in at x equals zero. Well, here I've zoomed in from negative 0.5 to 0.5 doesn't yet look linear, maybe I need to zoom in some more. Here I've zoomed in on a window so that x goes between a negative 1 one hundredth and a positive 1 one hundredth. And again, this is not looking like a line when I consider this region right here. So this function is not differentiable at x equals zero or any multiple of pi due to sharp corners existing at those points. And we'll look at one more case. Here's a case where if I zoom in or enlarge the graph around x equals two, here I'm again within one tenth on either side of x equals two, and I consider tangent lines. Looks like my tangent lines are, have negative slope and very negative slope at x equals two coming from the right I've got positive slopes. So it looks like from the left, as x approaches two from the left, the slopes approach negative infinity. As x approaches two from the right, the slopes are positive, and the slopes appear to approach positive infinity. So in this case, we say that the function is not differentiable at x equals two, and we call that a cusp. When considering the derivative as a function, for many functions we can use the limit definition of derivative to find a formula given a generic x value. This formula for the derivative gives the slope of the curve at an x value in its domain. We might also call that the rate of change at that x value. And we also have to consider the domain of the, dom the, domain of the derivative. Is the graph of the function locally linear for the various x values?